David, I'm joined by Washington Commissioner of Public Lands, Hillary France. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You've been warning us that this is going to be a terrible fire season. How high is the fire danger right now? Right now, it's obviously raining, so it's gotten reduced a little bit, but I would say it's been very high, and much of it is based on the numbers we've seen. So to date, we've already had over 900 fires. Um, we were already seeing fires in the second week of March, unheard of, 54 fires in one week, second week of March. We've never had that. And it's just continued to tick up as we've gotten to this point. Um, and so a lot of that and the fact that we have very dry conditions, but for the fact we're getting rain right now in many parts of our state, raises severe risks mm -hmm. of fire. Yeah, rain right now doesn't mean that that risk goes away overall for our summer. Do you think, though, that we're a little too reactionary when it comes to fires? We spend a lot of money fighting fires across the country and in this state. Are we doing enough beforehand to prevent fires to make sure that our lands are healthy? I would say historically we have not. We have not been working at the preventative front. As I always say, we're going to pay regardless. In fact, we've been paying $153 million annually to fight fires. Um, we could be putting the money up front and much less and being able to restore those forests, make them more resilient to fire and protect homes, protect our firefighters, protect our communities. So we haven't had that focus. Now what we've done in 2017 is we began to very significantly shift that and we developed a 20 year forest health plan for Washington State that has us treating 1.25 million acres of forest over the next 20 years. It's about 70,000 acres a year. This is an aggressive, very quick um, time frame given what we've been doing over the last 50 plus years and frankly when you look across the nation we are ahead we're getting ahead of that problem you've been fighting for a dedicated funding source you didn't get it what would you do if the state legislature did give you that well let me start by first saying historically we have not got much at all for wildfire protection or for forest health from the legislature. Last year, we were successful in at least getting 13 million for forest health, that preventative work to reduce the damage of fires, but we came out with very little for wildfire. This last session, we were very successful compared to previous uh, legislative sessions, and we secured $50 million, the most we've ever had, about 32 million of it for wildfire protection to get more resources, firefighters, helicopters, different kinds of capacity resources into our communities so we can get on those fires quickly and put them out. We also got 17 million to increase the amount of forest health work that we're doing. Obviously, it isn't helpful for us to implement a 20 year forest health plan, make the commitment to do that restorative work and also be able to tell our firefighters and communities that we're going to have the resources to fight those fires if every year we're fighting for dollars. Mm -hmm. um, the goal that we need to have is to have a dedicated funding stream so that we can make sure that we are doing that forest work, that we're making our communities more resilient, that we have the resources to fight those fires in an effective way that keep the fires small and we will be coming back to ensure we have a dedicated revenue stream. And I, I just want to say, I mean, these actions, preventative measures, that can save lives in itself. And I want to talk about preventing something else now. The other natural disaster that we expect here in the Northwest is earthquakes. And you just released this report that was pretty catastrophic in terms of what our schools are facing right now. More than 40% of public schools based on this audit are at high or very high risk for a loss of life in schools if we were to have a huge earthquake. What do you tell parents oh out there that send their kids to school? I mean, this is, this is a scary situation when you're talking about loss of life. How can we ensure that this doesn't happen? That's right, so our number one responsibility is to ensure our kids are safe. And we cannot right now today assure parents that where their kids go to school are absolutely going to be safe in the case of an earthquake. And I think it's important for all listeners to first recognize that we have the second highest risk of an earthquake in the nation, second only to California, which we know just experienced a pretty significant quake. We have 74% of our schools in high risk danger zones for earthquake. And we've only now just studied, begun to study 222 schools, which is 5% of the schools. And much of what we found was that they are in very high danger. A lot of our schools were built to actually many of them before the building codes were developed mm -hmm. here in 1970s. Um, and so we need to make an absolute commitment that we're gonna keep our kids safe 
and we're going to start by tackling our schools. And what well, we've done now is been able to identify at least 222 schools, what needs to happen. We'll be back this legislative session to be able to get an assessment on 300 more schools. This is a context where one, if we can make the retrofits, we can assure the safety of our kids. The mm -hmm. second thing we can do is many of these places are where communities go in a natural disaster, right? Our schools, our churches, our places where communities go. We need to have those buildings, not just for our kids, but also for the community. And then the third thing, we actually save dollars in the retrofits mm. than having to rebuild those after the disaster. It's saving lives and it's saving money. The same as the context of wildfire prevention and the work that we talked about before. Now, you are openly considering a run for governor. Is that correct? I have been asked by many people to consider running for governor. I will say right now, as we saw in the context of wildfire, it's top priority. We are going to likely have a very significant wildfire year, even though we have rain right now. It's the kind of wildfires where people's lives are truly at danger. And I oversee over 1,600 firefighters who are mm -hmm. putting their lives on the line. That's my focus. People have asked me to consider running for governor depending on what uh, Governor Inslee does. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. We've run out of time. I'm, there's so much more to talk about, but we really appreciate you coming on. This is the Commissioner of Public Lands, Hillary France. Guys, back to you.